Dio Santa, you want to tell us where, where you are located in, in your therapy um, practice? I am in Reading, PA. Um, yeah, so I've, I grew up in Reading um, and I've been working in Reading and I live in Reading. So. So, so what are kind of some of the therapy needs in your community in, in Reading, Pennsylvania? There's a huge population of Dominicans. There's also um, a big population of Mexicans, um, Central America, um, Puerto Ricans. Um, and we have a little bit of a mix. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I think we have Colombians, um, Venezuelans. We have a little bit of everything, but the major ones are Mexicans, Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and Central America. Um, so, I think there's a huge need of mental health, um, not only services, but education towards that specific population. Um, and also um, like African-Americans and um, like minorities. Like I think there's um, mainstream, there are more availability for mainstream services than for underserved people. And you're able to do therapy in Spanish. Mm -hmm. or yes. English. When I record my sessions and I see like how when I have, for example, um, it could be a Mexican couple, but maybe he was born there and she was um, raised here or born here, like, or, you know, it's seen that dynamic where, or the mom doesn't speak English, but the kid does speak English and they feel more, they're bilingual, but they feel more comfortable in English writing session. Like one is talking to me in English and the other one is talking to me in Spanish. And I have to be back and forth with that. Um, they feel comfortable, I think, because, um, and I've heard it from some of my clients, like, you know, they feel like, like it's a safe haven um, in this space. Um, to me, it's sacred ground. Um, and that's something I learned at Evangelical. I decided to go to Evangelical because I was looking for a place. I, I had my um, I had my bachelor's degree at um, Alvernia as a drug and alcohol counselor, and I was working in a local agency um, as a as a counselor for um, people who have suffered from domestic violence or um, sexual abuse. And I had this vision where kind of like God revealed me that I needed to work on my own healing. Um, it was like a camp where me and the staff in the place were kind of like helping these people that were wounded, but we had wounds too. And we were in, our wounds were getting infected and we were infecting their wounds. To me, that was a calling that you need to do your own healing. Um, so I started just looking and evangelical came my way and I felt like God was just sending me um, to this place. Um, what caught me, called me into this, um, this school was that they were equipping me not only academically, but also spiritually, and they focused on the self with the therapist. Um, so when I was there, it was very in line to what it was ad advertised. Um, so... I don't think, you know, I, I guess what was surprised in was the intensity of the program, not academically. And they told me, uh, but, um, you know, like being immersed in the program and um, it was, it was, it was heavy, uh, but we had like so much um, support, um, not only from like my main cohort, um, but the other cohorts that were like, sometimes we crossed some classes and also the staff and the professors, it was like a family. So ending my program was a big loss because, um, and I grieved that um, because it was like my, my safe zone and my comfort zone. Um, there was a lot that we shared together. Um, so I guess if anything surprising was like how much um, connection um, we got how connected we were, um, the relationships we built, even if they were not forever, even if it was just during that season. Um, and I'm great. I'm really, I'm forever going to be grateful for that. And that's always going to be part of who I am. Getting to know God in a different level and a more relational level. Um, 
getting um, to understand that God loved me just as I was, um, but not only like know it here, but kind of like bring it to my heart and being more free, being more free to be who I was and being okay with who I am, not trying to be, trying to pretend to, to, or trying to be what I, what I, what I thought others wanted me to be and what it meant to be a Christian, what it meant to be God, like all of this, um, being able to understand all of this um, helped me to transform me as a woman and as a person. And that sharp me um, to be better as a professional. Is there a moment that kind of sticks out to you um, as a highlight or (gasps) took your breath away while you were um, in in your studies here at Evangelical? And I knew I was at Evangelical because God called me. I knew that I needed to finish my degree um, because he wanted to use me in a certain way and I needed to get equipped, but I didn't know if I was able to continue. Um, And I remember that um, Joy um, came back from her sabbatical and I went to see her because I didn't know if I was gonna, if I was gonna drop out or what I was gonna do. Um, And when I talked to her, Um, instead of telling me what to do, like she just guided me. She asked permission if she could do like a, um, like a prayer or a guided meditation. Um, And she's like, I don't have the answer, but I know who has the answer. And she guided me towards Jesus without telling me go to Jesus, you know? And, and um, it was such a, um, it was a very powerful experience to me where kind of like Jesus reminded me that um, he had chosen me and that he was going <laughs> to, that he was going to equip me um, to complete whatever I needed. Like he was going to give me this. And if I was at a, any other school, at a, um, I don't think I would have get that. Is God inviting you to deeper study? Is God inviting you to support students? Visit us at evangelical.edu.